viewers welcome back this is bharti satish let us start the continuation of this experience sonnets today we are going to know about sonnet number 40 in which he most he says it is the most desolate sonnet in the sequence because the poet shares all his possession with the fair youth but the fair youth shares poet's mistress also finally the poet forgives the youth for his lecherous nature and in sonnet 46 there is a conflict or a fight between the eyes and the heart of the poet why because the eyes is longing for the sight of the youth good youth's good look it is outward and the heart his heart needs to love and loved by himself this is inward so let's move to the next sonnet sonnet number 76 repetition of old ideas and the new words he says he is he get bored dumb by the repetition of the same ideas and it is like he compares it with the sun rises and sets every day poet watches other poets experimenting with new exciting subjects and styles of writing and in sonnet number 82 it is the sonnet one among the sonnet which is between sonnet 76 to sonnet 86 written for his rival poets uh he says that he has less subdued poets as rival poets and their adoration of the youth were artificial rhetorics only and he says as a false adoration the poet mentions youth's beauty as in the form of simple truthfulness youth's beauty is more fanciful than any imaginary words could ever be now we move on to sonnet number 91 in this sonnet which is, it is very very simple that he says all the words like money honor all are low when compared to the love of for the fair youth and in sonnet 1 and 2 the poet he says the youth is all for him he doesn't care for critics or flatterers think so long as the youth men does not think ill of him and in sonnet number 116 a meditative attempt to define love he compares true love with a pole star do make a note of it he compares true love with a pole star and in sonnet 126 this is the last the last about the fair youth in the sequence and it serves as a nv uh, or a closing sonnet of fair youth sequence it is all about the time and the nature and it sums up that time destroys the beauty and love and in sonnet number 140 it it is from dark dark lady sequence uh, here the poet threatens the woman with a public humiliation and two warnings what is the first warning not to be too public in her flirt with other men and in the second warning uses a simile like if a dying patient needs a false assurance from the doctor he also needs a false assurance of love from the dark lady finally in the public he threatens her that she should only give attention to the poet not to the others otherwise she she doesn't obey for this he will slander her in public oh my god horrible warning so you know okay let us move on to the other sonnet sonnet number 144 This is the only poem both fair youth and the dog lady mention together. The poet says man as a right fair and woman as a worse spirit or colour ill. There are two kind of love battle for supremacy within the poet's own character. Here he, the poet says the fair youth's love as a self adoration and com- that comfort comforts the poet. and he says his love for his mistress is a shameful lust and is a, it despairs the poet and we'll move on to the sonnet number 1147 final sonnet concerning his mistress the poet shows his battle of for love and rationally says love made him mad he compares his mistress with a black hell and night finally the last sonnet in the sequence is sonnet number 154 This sonnet is about the Cupid. He is a Greek god of love. He is a little god. Uh, we have seen in so many pictures also. He one day he fell asleep. Uh, that time, Valtry, a nymph of goddess Diana, steals his heart in flaming blood, and uh, that is so hot. And she quenches it in a cool well. 
poet who has come to the well to find his relief from his love for his mistress continues to suffer. Why? Because the poet's disease is incurable. As we all know, the love disease is incurable. So this is the end of this video. We will meet in the next video.